Welcome to Category Theory, The Beginner's Introduction. I am Martin Cottington, and this is Lesson 1, Video 1 of 6. Welcome to the first video of the first lesson of what I hope will be a complete, accessible, and exciting exploration of Category Theory. I am Dr. Martin Cottington, and I'll tell you a little bit about me at the end of this video, but let's first discuss the intent and the intended audience of this video series. I intend to provide a self-contained introduction to Category Theory, no mathematics prerequisites with a focus on the ways in which it can be practically applied to solving many different types of real-world problems. For this reason, our exploration will be project-based. It will be divided into sections that will consist of 5 to 10 lessons. At the end of each section, we will apply what we have learned to designing software that implements it. For the first few sections, the area of focus will be music theory. There are two reasons for choosing music rather than, say, data analysis, the area to which I've done most of my category theory work. The first is because I wanted to reach the widest possible audience. Category theory can be applied to everything from pure and applied mathematics, anthropology, economics, financial engineering, philosophy, and linguistics, just to name a few. I would like anyone who is interested to be able to follow along, not just in the theoretical discussions, but in the application phase as well. Also, many of the sets we will be dealing with in the beginning, with music, are very small, on the order of 7, 12, 17 elements so we can easily visualize the internal diagrams of the maps we discuss. And, with music, you can hear the results of our theoretical aspirations. In a few weeks, when we are able to write software that creates a melody and harmonizes it beautifully, then takes that melody and translates it to another mode, and modifies it, reharmonizes it, and then explains exactly what it did using normal language that you can understand, you will quickly see the power of the theory. As this sounds like a lot, or difficult to design and program, Stick around for the first seven lessons, where we will be exploring the category of abstract sets and arbitrary mappings, and introduce a category of sets of an endomorphism, commonly interpreted as dynamical systems or automatons, and its subcategory, the category of sets of a permutation. With these categories alone, we can do all these things rather easily. This first lesson is intended to give you an overview of the category theory way of thinking. We will go through the definition of a category and get used to constructing and reasoning with commutative diagrams. In this video, we will go over the planned structure of our exploration in category theory, and I will discuss the one music prerequisite you need, an understanding of the 12-pitch classes. In video 2, I will give the definition of a general category, and of S, the category of abstract sets and arbitrary mappings, and we will begin to go through the definition of that category by exploring the objects and arrows in S, and then build our own category based on S, music S. In video 3, we will discuss composition in detail, with abstract examples and examples from Music S. The topic of video 4 is the associative law, the identity arrow and the identity laws. In video 5, we will learn how to calculate the number of maps between sets in S and get our first introduction to finite inverse limits and co-limits, universal mapping properties as we will call them in S. We will introduce them by discussing the terminal and initial object. This will lead us to discussing the nature of maps in S op, the opposite or mirror category, as we seek to understand duality. Armed with the powerful terminal object, we will rid ourselves of the set theory baggage that we've been carrying around by redefining familiar concepts about sets in the language of category theory, and we will formulate our first proofs by constructing commutative diagrams. In terms of how much we will be covering in category theory, the quick answer is a lot, but slowly. My goal is to help you form an intuition for all the elementary concepts before we use them to build higher order concepts. So, for example, it makes no sense formulating with natural transformation before you have a good intuition for functors. And why formulate with functors if you don't first have a fundamental understanding of a few concrete categories? This method is especially necessary since we will be applying everything we learn. We will start first with elementary concrete category theory by describing S. We will introduce and explain many of the popular finite inverse limits and co-limits, such as the terminal and initial object, monic and epic arrows, pullbacks and pushouts, equalizers and co-equalizers, and products and co-products. We will also discuss in detail important constructs, such as the truth value object and its relation to sub-objects and map objects, etc. At the end, we will discuss the notion of the limit more formally, and begin to define our own limits in music S. Discussing S in detail will prepare us for discussing other categories. As we shall see, many categories of structured sets 
can be derived by considering limits and colimits as objects. For example, the category of variable sets, dynamical systems, permutations, graphs of various types, groups of various types, pole sets, bouquets, bisets, pointer sets, and many more can be derived from the axioms or the limits in set. We will in turn go through the limits and colimits in these categories, explain their use, and show how we can form even more structured categories by objectifying their limits. The pace at which we move depends on the group. Lessons will ideally be produced at a rate of 1 every 1 to 1.5 weeks. At the end of each lesson, I will listen to your feedback, upload supplemental videos if anything needs further explanation, and after this I will upload the problem set video and also post a PDF of the problem set so that you can have some interesting problems to work on while I make the next lesson. Every concept in category theory is connected in interesting and complex ways, and often I will be unable to resist the temptation to point out these connections. Like for example, when discussing the identity laws, we see that the category of sets with an endomorphism, and in general any category C with an endomorphism, is logically implied by the axioms of a category itself. Whenever I give one of these a size, things will go green to indicate that you can follow along if you like, but if you don't fully understand, don't worry, because we will be discussing that concept in detail in the future. Category theory is very powerful. I can give a complete introduction, I can give an accessible introduction, but I can't also make it a quick introduction. It will take about five or six lessons before we have covered enough for you to get a glimpse of the full potential of the theory, and it will take another few months for us to cover most of our ground. These videos are intended to support discussion in the Facebook group, a product of category theory, music, and computer science. For now, this is where we will be discussing and applying the content in these videos. So, let's get started by discussing the format of our explorations. This cycle we will follow will allow us to learn a little, then apply it. In the beginning, it will take a while to complete one cycle, but as we progress, the pace will pick up. First, we will have a category theory overview, where we introduce the theoretical concepts we will use in our formulation. There will be some examples from music, but just simple examples used to illustrate a certain point. We will not do any detailed formulation at this stage. Two, category theory deep dive. Here we will take each concept introduced in the overview and catalog the many ways we could apply these concepts to music theory. This will give you a better understanding both of the concepts and the ways that they can be applied. We will use music theory informally during this phase as well, but we will learn more about it as we progress. Three, music theory formulation. Here we will actually begin formulating the music theory. We will choose the best tools from our knowledge of category theory so far and use these tools to model and to understand certain concepts in music theory. We will then identify the questions we would like to ask with these formulations or how these formulations can help us further advance our knowledge of music theory. Four is the software implementation. Here we will design the implementation that most closely mirrors the formulations, which will allow us to create ways to answer the questions that we have formulated in the previous step. Let me illustrate by giving an example of the first cycle. Don't worry if you don't understand any of this. This is not the actual formulation we will use and we will go through all these concepts in great detail during our discussion. Stage one, I will introduce a category of abstract sets and arbitrary mappings in a series of lessons. In stage two, we will start by representing the 12 pitch classes as a set X. We can then define an isomorphism N into a set C of pitch class names and we will see how the finite inverse limits and co-limit of sets will allow us to represent some more useful musical concepts. In stage three, after we have explored all the possible ways we could represent certain concepts, we will form a list of the questions we would like to ask and figure out how best to do this within the theory. For example, asking which pitch classes the major and minor mode have in common is best represented as a question about subobjects. Given two subobjects, mi, mj of x, representing the major and minor mode respectively, can we find a third subobject a of x that is also a subobject of mi and mj, and moreover that a is the largest set which satisfied these conditions? In stage four, using prime injection and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we can design an algorithm that closely mirrors the formulation. For example, we can define a monad map from x to n, the natural numbers that associates the nth prime with the nth element of x, so that the major mode, for example, can be represented by the unique integer 29,153,410 and the minor mode by 14,713,790. Asking what are all the pitch classes they have in common is equivalent to asking the identity of the set A, which is equivalent to asking in this formulation 
what is the greatest common divisor of 29,153,410 and 14,713,790. Designing algorithms in this way will allow for a better understanding of the concepts and will allow non-programmers to actually design the outline of computer algorithms without knowing any computer science or without having any practical experience with programming. After completing all four stages of a cycle, we will repeat the entire process for some new collection of theoretical concepts. Maybe we'll define and explore three or four new categories in one go, then repeat the process. I haven't decided yet. Let's see how things go for the first cycle. But in real life, you rarely ever work in just one category. But rather, you'll find yourself moving between 10 to 15 categories in one formulation. Well, at least that's how I work. So, the more quickly we can learn a few different categories and discuss functors in more detail, the happier our lives will be. For the music prerequisites, you'll just need to understand the concept of the 12-pitch classes. If you look at a keyboard, you will notice that there are groups of two black notes and groups of three. Consider only the groups of two black notes. The white note to the left of the first black note in that group is a C. Since this is a repeated pattern on the keyboard, we can pick one C, then take all the notes between that C and the next C, but not including the next, and study these separately. Now we will call these pitch classes instead of notes, and technically there aren't notes until they've been played. Different C's on the keyboard are different pitches, but the same pitch class. Any mode or scale can be formed from these pitch classes. We say that a mode is a subset of these pitch classes. To begin with, we'll define each mode starting on C, and as we move further along, we'll learn how to transpose from C major to F major, for example. But for now, when we talk of major or minor, we're referring to C major and C minor respectively. The major scale, for example, is made up of all the white pitch classes in this collection. Notice that each black note can have one of two names. This is because each black note lies between two white notes. One to the left, let's call it L, and one to the right, let's call it R, so that the black note can be called L sharp because it's higher or sharper than L, or R flat because it's lower or flatter than R. So this first black note can be called C sharp or D flat because it's between C and D. In some cases in music, one name must be used instead of another because of conventions. For example, the minor mode is made up of the following pitches. It would be incorrect according to traditional music theory to call the E flat D sharp or the A flat G sharp. The reason for this is that these modes are built with the idea that it must contain one of each pitch name. So for example, if we construct C minor, we have C, D. We already have a kind of D, so the next note must be a kind of E, E flat. So we have E flat, F, and G. And now we need some kind of A, so A flat instead of G sharp, and B. Not all modes are constructed like this. Some modes can have an E flat and an E, for example but many of the modes used in early music are constructed this way. The chromatic scale is made up of all these pitches. We can list the pitches of the chromatic scale like this. What all these things imply, we'll explore later, but for now, this is all you need to understand from music to get started before exploration. I was born in Barbados, and in 2005, I completed my Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry from Morgan State University. I received my PhD from Texas A&M University in 2012. My dissertation research was focused on the analysis of nuclear collisions with the solenoidal tracker at RIC, STAR, at the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider, RIC, at Brahaven National Laboratories in Long Island, New York. I started exploring category theory in 2011. I was disenchanted with current data analysis methodologies and techniques and wanted to find better solutions. I was also considering switching to theoretical nuclear physics, but didn't think that group theory was sufficiently powerful as a mathematical base. My initial plan was to spend a few weeks exploring category theory. But a few years later, I had completed designing a new data analysis methodology and a meta-language that would allow me to easily design software to implement this methodology. By 2014, I was hooked. I switched to category theory, and I am applying it to data analysis, music theory, linguistics, software design, and number theory, my first love. 
So since I'm no longer doing nuclear physics, I am applying specifically topos theory to currency trading and similar markets. In six to eight months, I hope to have completed the development and testing of the first iteration of my trading platform and trading algorithms. This is what I will be doing in parallel to making these videos. I currently live in Esteli, Nicaragua, best known for its cigars, where I am continuing to develop my theoretical methods, compose, and do photography, both everyday snapshots and art photography. But that's enough about me. It's time to begin exploring category theory. In the next video, we will look at the definition of a category in general and the category of abstract sets and arbitrary mappings specifically. So, see you next time. Thank you.